welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. We're so delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today we have a wonderful guest yet again. Her name is Kimberly Henkel. Now, Kimberly is an adoptive mother to four beautiful children. And she founded a beautiful ministry called Springs in the Desert. It's a Catholic infertility ministry. In conjunction with that ministry, she started Springs of Love, which focuses on bringing the good of foster care and adoption to Catholic families. And you can watch Springs of Love on EWTN On Demand. And you can always go to our website, springsoflove.org, to find out more. You might be a couple at home and you're... Maybe you have struggled with infertility. Maybe you are wondering, God, are you calling us to adopt? Maybe you've had one child and you can't have any more children and you're thinking, is God asking you to enlarge your tent (coughs) and do more? And there are so many ways that you can get involved and Kimberly is going to share with us. It might not mean that you become an adoptive uh, couple. It might mean you want to assist and aid a couple that's getting ready to adopt. What ways can you help them? And Kimberly's going to share all the beautiful ways in which we, as a pro-life community, who we say that we are in the church, we're pro-life, that these are things that we could do. It's not just standing out in front of an abortion clinic. It's not just working (laughs) at a pregnancy medical center. This is another extension of being pro-life and a way that you certainly can get involved. This is an unbelievable work, mm-hmm. and and this needs to be articulated to our parishes. There's a lot of help that's needed here for the women that are placing their child up for adoption, for those who aren't placing them, but they've been torn out of their hands mm-hmm. and placed into foster care, for those that are doing foster care, for those who are adopting them, and for the whole parish to come, and for mm-hmm. the child himself or herself. And so I, I really hope the deacons and the priests and the bishops, if there's any of you out there listening, lay people out there, it's not only about adopting and doing foster care, it's about training in our parishes to say that this is what Catholics do. Mm -hmm. This is what Christians do. Are we really doing it? There's a part for everybody. This thing is huge and a great need for support. So we'll be right back, plenty more to come. Don't go away, listen closely. Let's all do our part. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today we have yet again Kimberly Henkel, and she's joining us. Kimberly is an adoptive mother to four beautiful children, and she started a ministry called Springs of Love, which focuses on bringing the good of foster care and adoption to Catholic families. You could go to uh, Springs of Love On Demand, or you can go to her website, springsoflove.org, to find out more. And if you're a couple out there and you're struggling, or maybe you're um, a grandmother and you know you have uh, a son or a daughter who's really struggling with this, you could just gently suggest this website to them, Springs of Love, or go to EWTN.com forward slash on demand, look on the pro-life tab, and they will pop up and... There's just beautiful conversations and videos of couples that have struggled and uh, who ventured out and took the risk, put their foot in the water and said, here I am, Lord, use me. And so, and I know that Kimberly will share so much more with us today. Well, we are so excited to have you back. Now, you told us yesterday that there are 400,000. Okay, that's, that's an enormous amount of children that need that are in foster care that need to be welcomed in to our homes i mean they really do and you just think christian catholic somebody somebody 
put their foot in the water and say, Lord, it's me. I could do this. I could take one child, mm -hmm. right, to get started. So tell our family about the triad adoption process and about the adoption process. What about support? Sure. What are the three areas? Because you're not only nailing down these people that sometimes we forget. You're saying, we want to accompany them, we want to support them, but that's a whole big deal. You can't do that alone. <laughs> Open that up to us. Yeah, so I know when we started this ministry, we, we, just, we just knew something needed to be done to bring attention to this to this issue, to yeah. the pro-life community. Um, you know, my husband and I have been very involved with pro-life and we never heard anybody talking about fostering. Mm -hmm. And um, then when we fostered, we looked around our class and we were like, there are no Catholics mm -hmm. here. And as we started fostering and going to visitations, I would meet these amazing Protestants and they would mm -hmm. be telling me how, they, how excited they were about fostering and how they had brought in all these different children and how they were just seeing these children's lives transformed when they were loving them and mm -hmm. you know, to have the love of Christ. These children need healed. These children, mm -hmm. I mean, all of us do, right? But, but these children have gone through so much trauma. They've gone through neglect, abuse, and they need the love of God. They need to be ministered to. They need to be loved. They need to be attached. You know, people are say, oh, well, I don't want to get too mm -hmm. close. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, you have to guard your heart. You know, it's like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. You give your whole heart, You're right? All in. You just mm -hmm. give your heart. They need yeah. to be touched by love in the flesh. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. our, our flesh, your flesh. Absolutely. Okay. They need to touch that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, you had mentioned the adoption triad. So mm -hmm. what the adoption triad actually is, is the three, so if you look at like a triangle, mm -hmm. um, you know, the adoptee, right. the adoptive family, and the birth family. So when we talk about adoption, you know, we've got three big players here. And a lot of times we'll focus our attention on the child, which, you know, obviously the, the vulnerable child is, is like the focal point, absolutely. But the, the birth family and the adoptive family, like they're forever linked with this child. And so we, we can't just dismiss the birth family. And a lot of times I think there's a tendency to do that, to like focus yeah. on the baby and mm -hmm. forget the birth family. And there are women who are hurting who've had their take, their children either taken, and men, I don't want to just discount, mm -hmm. you know, men too, um, they've had their children taken, mm -hmm. um, you know, because they, they have a lot of problems, right? And right. maybe they're not safe. Um, but, you know, I would love a soft landing place for these people because once, the, once uh, foster care ends and these people, maybe the, the birth moms, the birth dads, maybe they're addic they have addictions, they have things yeah. going on. Um, once they've lost their child, they've lost all motivation to mm -hmm. get better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they are spiraling yeah. very quickly. And, you know, we care about those people. I mean, right. you know, mm -hmm. this is like if you have adopted or fostered children, you know, these are our... Right. The birth parents of our children, you know, like we, we need to love them. This is an amazing evangelist, mm -hmm. this evangelistic opportunity. Mm -hmm. When I was going and having visitations with my birth mothers, you know, for my children, I realized these women, you know, they don't know the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I just shared, you know, my testimony yeah. and how God transformed my life and the brokenness that I had experienced. And, um, and told these women, you know, you are so beloved. Like you were so, and they were like, nobody has, has ever spoken mm. to me this way before. So I just, you know, I want to give a little attention to that because, you know, our ministry, we want to accompany people. We want to accompany the adoptive families. You know, after a, a, a family has adopted, a lot of times there's no support after mm -hmm. that. And, you know, you need help navigating this. When do I talk to my child about their adoption? How much information do I give them? How do we talk about the birth families? How do I do an open adoption? Should I? You know, all these different things. And that's why we have created Springs of Love. We have so many beautiful resources yeah. that we're developing. But more than that, we're trying to have community. We're trying mm -hmm. to develop small groups for parishes, for adoptive families, for foster families, for birth mothers, mm -hmm. yeah. for adoptees. And it's a lot of work, right? I mean, I have this amazing vision but I need, I need more people yeah. to get involved, you know, because this is like such an important, important. And, and you're not a millionaire, we can confirm no. that. <laughs> or you just need to be almost a billionaire. I mean, really, there's a cost to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in bodies, in people, but I think, you know, if you build it, as it said, yeah. they will come. Mm. And Joe, Joe was just reminding me when I was serving as a pastor, I forgot about this. I, I knew this couple that had adopted a number of children. And she said, Jim, remember, that somebody challenged us and said, you know, you're doing a lot of pro-life stuff, so necessary. 
Um, but you're not speaking about foster care or adoption. So we had, I think it was just a secular person from foster care mm -hmm. come in and speak, and that's how they adopt. They just heard something. Mm -hmm. If they would just hear in our parishes and say, this is what the need is, and the pastors really get involved to promote this, and for them to know as well, we're not asking you to create a whole thing with this. The thing is there regarding infertility care for people, regarding foster care adoption. We need support groups, we need people to get involved, and we really believe that if you just say it, we have the format and we can implement this. Yes. That's what I hear you saying. Yes, and awareness is such a big piece of it, and this is why we created the Springs of Love video series, mm -hmm. to share stories of those who've been touched by fostering and adoption. So like you said, on the EWT, EWTN On Demand right. website under Pro-Life right. are the Springs of Love stories. We've got um, a story of, of a, a woman who aged out of foster care, um, a birth mom mm -hmm. who placed her daughter for adoption and now has this beautiful relationship mm -hmm. as an adult with her. Mm -hmm. um, and then foster families who wanted to adopt who you know, lost the children back yeah. to their, they mm -hmm. went back with their birth family, but then they continued having a beautiful relationship right. with them. We don't even know this is happening, but it's happening. And so you can have a child in your care, foster care, that you have loved and you've poured into and they have gone back to their families and you can continue to love and support that mm -hmm. family. Yes. And yeah. what a gift, right? I mean, we have this one story you have to watch called One Big Family. And it's uh, the birth dad was in prison and his boys went into foster care and it was a wake up call to him like, oh my gosh, because all he had heard were nightmare stories right. about foster care. Yeah. And he's like, I gotta get my act together. So he goes and gets his act together. Meanwhile, this family who's fostered these boys for two years, they've fallen madly in love with these boys, they want to adopt them. Yeah. And then birth dad gets out of prison and he's like, he does everything he can and he gets his boys back. Well, the family's devastated. But they say, look, we still want a relationship. Mm -hmm. And at first the birth dad's like, you know, not quite yet. Well, in time he opens up and they now call themselves one big family. It's right. beautiful. That's incredible. And he's like, <laughs> it, it, I mean, right? The power of God. It's like, he's like, these people love me more than my family. Right. I mean, the like, way they've been so supportive. And that, the, the beautiful thing about the ministry and Springs of Love is that there's not one size that fits all. And it doesn't mean this is how you have to do it. This is the only way. No, there are lots of ways for lots of different people because love wins. And it, it, just because like if, even if uh, the birth parent comes back into the scene, it doesn't cut the relationship off necessarily, right? Because love extends itself. It's like, wait a minute, I've just poured my life into this child and, and we can assist you. So how can we help you? And when you see the child in context, like when we've seen, when we've been able to place babies up for adoption. In the center. And you see these babies in with these other families, you're like, oh my gosh, this child was born for this family. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can't believe how beautiful all that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you know that. But tell our family, so you do all these things for all the other families so they can be connected, the birth mother, um, the adopted, family. adopted families. But then you have what's called the respite, where right. what of the what, tell uh, tell our family what that is that aspect in, of in the movement care. what is right, that right 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 so fostering um, you know it's when a child cannot it's not safe for a child to be home anymore a child is removed and you know sometimes you know when they're first removed it can be in the middle of the night right. and this is what often happens is mm -hmm. the police officer goes there's a drug bust they go into the home mm -hmm. there's children there they're taking the children out at two o'clock in the morning they need a place for that child to go well. Sometimes they don't have a place for that right. child to go. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty of respite. So if you can become a respite provider, mm -hmm. they will call you and say, can you take these you know, two children mm -hmm. right now in the middle of the night and keep them for a few days until we can find a more permanent, you know, temporary permanent mm -hmm. placement for these children. And so that's what respite is, or it's giving a, a foster family a break for a weekend. Sometimes foster families will go on a vacation and okay. they don't get permission to take a child out of state. Mm -hmm. So they need a loving family that will keep that child. So it's a great way yeah. for people to, to, to go through the classes, to open their hearts, to be able to take a child just for a few days. Yes. And, and you're making such a huge impact, such a huge, and a lot of times we'll have grandparents, older couples who are not ready to, you know, jump mm -hmm. into full-time fostering, but they will be like grandparents, you know, like foster grandparents right. for, for children, and they can develop a relationship with a foster family, and then they can get those kids, you know, <laughs> once a month, yeah. and yeah. just be like grandpa and just love on these kids. So, yeah. I, you know, we're telling people about this, and yeah. more people are doing this. Mm -hmm. That's a great, 
phrase, you know, those grandparent thing, because I said to Julie when I was reading your stuff, I, saying, I think that's what we're doing with our children, especially the one who has eight. You know, yes. it's like we just say, you know, you need to go out and we'll come in that's and beautiful. we'll do whatever. So that's an interesting place to be on the nice. team. You know, just that short-term thing that helps, well, helps that, that child in dire need or helping out a family that's doing more long-term stuff. Right. And saying, we want to give you a break, we're with us. Any other examples well, of what community, yes. what community means, like in terms of people who may have done foster care, how many of them continue on with it yeah. who don't have any support? How many will continue if they have the support that you're talking about? Right. What are the stats on that or anything? Right, because it is so hard. It is hard. To, it is hard to foster. I mean, our situation was not as. I don't know. I feel like ours wasn't as hard because we had infants. Um, it's not as hard with the babies. But you know, there are beautiful people that are fostering older children, and that is where the greatest need is. Mm -hmm. And you know, but you get the training, and I think a lot of times people, I can't handle that. Well, they train you. You learn the training. You learn about how to help children who've who've had not, trauma. Who've had trauma, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's beautiful mm -hmm. um, things out there, and they're on our website too. We have mm -hmm. some resources. But, um, you know, when a child has gone through that, it can take a toll on a family. It can be very, very challenging. So that's why we need the support. So they say a lot of times foster families will quit, 50 percent will quit after the first year. But if they are supported by a care community, a, a community of support, 90 yeah. percent will continue. So just imagine in our parishes, if we could build up a support community for foster families, we could build up a, we call them fostering love team, a mm -hmm. team of people, like five people, who would surround a foster family with mm -hmm. support and say, you know what? we're going to bring you a meal, you know, once a month. Mm -hmm. We're going to offer, you know, a date night for you too. Right. Like you guys mm -hmm. go out, we'll watch the kids. Or transportation, I mean, that's a huge thing. These yeah. kids will have to have visitations mm -hmm. with birth parents, doctor's appointments, things like that. If you can help just in a little way, and prayer support is number one. I mean, mm -hmm. that is the number one for a family. Like when we were going through the court stuff, crazy stuff happens. And you're like, who do I call? Who mm -hmm. do I, I mean, I was calling convents. Yeah. Not, I was just calling comments like, pray for us. But yeah. how beautiful <clears throat> if you already have a team at your parish right. who you, you could call up and say, this just happened with my child yeah. and mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Or, you know, and, yeah. and pray for us. Yeah. And to have somebody, a lifeline, you know, to just yes. cover your family in prayer like, yeah. is so important. Yeah. You know, I, I think with the girls that we see and what we've learned in the movement regarding pregnancy medical centers, um, how many girls have testified to the fact, if I had one person that I knew would support me, I would not have had this abortion. Absolutely. And so that's the Pregnancy Medical Center. And it's the same thing now with foster care and with adoption. Those people who may have done foster care for a little while and they're just kind of burned out, maybe they would say, if I just had one or two people in my mm -hmm. parish understood this to some degree, I, I, I think I would do more. As a matter of fact, I am doing more because I found you know, this ministry that's just supporting yes. me. Mm -hmm. And this is the way it's supposed to be. We're a community of faith. And we're asking people to kind of do things just individually, or maybe it's not being heard or, or, or voiced. And there are a lot of people who are just saying, you know, I don't know what you're going through, what you're doing, but I want to stand under you. I right. want to understand. I can't say I know about foster care and adoption, but I want to be on your team. And you can call me, I could pray, and we'll develop a support group for you. That's part of the vision that you have. Yes, that would be so beautiful. And to create that culture of fostering and adoption in our parishes, mm -hmm. we need to, to really surround people and accompany them yeah. through all of this. Yeah. So that's why I, I'm saying we're hoping to start these small groups, small groups and parishes. So in the Columbus Diocese, we have a small group starting right now um, at Immaculate Conception in mm -hmm. Columbus. They're, the, How they're, beautiful. they're starting mm -hmm. it out for us. Wow. And we're going to have a team of support, a support um, network for foster families. Mm -hmm. So foster families can come there, kinship families, and talk about their experiences and get yeah. support with each other. That's what we need. Right. And then I'm hoping we can get other parishes in the diocese, like another parish to yeah. do a support <clears throat> a small group for birth moms. Mm -hmm. Another one maybe for birth dads. Another one maybe for these families that are at risk of losing their children. Mm -hmm. If we can do a community of support and or, or accompany yeah. these people, they can you know, they yeah. can know the love of we God and maybe we can turn no, really for generations could. to you come. You could empty out the foster care system. If, if, I mean, if really every diocese 
just one thing. <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? Yes. Every parish in your diocese just did one thing and say, yes. we're going to be that arm. We're going to be this arm. We're going to have five couples in our church who are going to take the midnight calls. Any babies in foster care, call us. You know what I mean? We're experienced couples. We can wake up in the middle of the night. We're already all sleep deprived. We can handle this, right? right? Let's take a break at this point. Hold you over for the final segment. This is just so critical, a reality. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. As you do it to the least, you did it to me. We'll be right back. special show uh, this has been. We just have a few minutes before we're closing and just want to kind of turn it over to you. Uh, your vision's a large one. It's, it's materializing. We really need the whole body of Christ to be involved at this very special time in the pro-life movement and seeing this as, as a vital part of the pro-life movement and answering those accusations. So we just care about the baby. Well, we do care about the baby, but you don't care about after that. And that's, you're addressing that so beautifully in terms of foster care, in terms of adoption, in terms of serving Jesus in these the least. But you need a lot of support. Tell us yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, it would be great because we are <clears> a, new, a new growing ministry. And right now, I mean, I'm doing a lot of the work and my yeah. husband. So it's, you know, our family has kind of founded this ministry. But we, we need people. We, I need somebody yeah. to head up the, you know, division for adoptive parents, for uh, adoptees, you know, to be able to minister to all of these sectors, we need, we need more support, you know, just if, if you feel this call on your heart and you want to get involved, you know, you can start something either in your parish or you can join me at the national level to try to, 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 to bring about a movement in mm -hmm. our churches, because I think it's just the perfect time. And this is the right time right. To, to be to be really focused in on this on this yeah. issue and trying to just raise awareness. We can do that in our parishes. We can put on foster care awareness events. We can bring in the local foster care agency to talk about the needs in our community. Yeah. It's not that hard to just do a little bit and to start to learn about it. And as you learn more, then I think, you know, your capacity right. to like get involved, you know, one, it, it increases. Mm -hmm. So yes, please, I, we're just asking people come to our website, see the resources we have. If you are in the adoption triad already, please write a, write a blog post for us. You know, we have beautiful posts. Um, you know, we're trying to tell the stories. We're really trying to get the stories out and we're trying to support people. So, you know, if you want to get involved, if you need support, you know, reach out to us. If you can get your parish involved, that'd be great. We just had this parish in Columbus that did a big Giving Tuesday campaign for mm -hmm. us and raised, you know, $12,000 yeah. mm -hmm. for the ministry, which was amazing. It was just oh, yeah. this godsend. So yeah. there's so many ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for this time and introducing us to so beautiful of ministries, infertility ministry, uh, foster care, adoption, and for helping the church to come into a greater mm -hmm. fullness, especially at this hour um, of a holistic approach to the pro-life movement and radical solidarity with these precious children and knowing that, uh, you know, I just keep hearing, you know, the, the passage in Matthew 25 and kind of adding to that, you know, I was in prison, you visited me, I was thirsty and it's like, I was in foster care. You know, you, 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 you came me. to me, I needed to be adopted. <laughs> mm -hmm. You adopted me just like Christ has adopted us. There's no mm -hmm. natural children to, to the Lord. We're all adopted children. You know, where is that? Where is that movement? And, you know, in terms of all the pro-life work we do in our center, now I have, a, I have something to say when people accuse us of just doing this one aspect. Mm -hmm. Say, so, you know what? We're doing foster care. We're, we're doing adoption. We're, we're doing supporting people. And here's this ministry, Springs of Love, right? And, and Springs in the Desert, right, for infertility. So thank you for ministering to the church. May we respond to your mm -hmm. call. Yes. What a blessing today has been. And once again, I make an appeal to those considering foster care and adoption to go to the website, springsoflove.org. 
because you may have concerns, this and that, they're addressing the concerns, the myths, and everything. You have a community to support you. And then to those of us that are leading ministries in the pro-life movement, those who are leading dioceses, you bishops, uh, this is great for you and great for your parishes to, to put this right at front and center in terms of the ministry, because you get the media all the time saying, well, what else do you do besides going out to the abortion mills and so on? And, and this is what we do. We love all people, and we love the women who've had abortions to get healing for them, those who've, had to pl who've placed their babies for adoption, those who've had the babies ripped out of their hands. We care about you. And so this woman wants to raise up communities and fellowships to support these people. We need to support her. And Springs of Love, you're an important part of this EW10 family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.